Dr. Bismillah Kamandarayan. So, uh, this will be our seventh lecture. So, in this lecture, we will start from article number uh, 2.4. Uh, that one is the extension of the wave theory of atoms. Okay. So, uh, so far we have uh, learned about the uh, one dimensional potential energy functions and to try to solve the Schrodinger's time independent wave equation and try to find out the probability functions of uh, finding a particle at a particular position, right? Okay. Now in article number 2.4.1, that one is one atom electron. So, so we know that nucleus is a heavy and positive and charged proton and the electron is a light. Now, and the uh, electron is a light and negative charged particle. So if we consider from the uh, Faraday's law uh, or the, from Coulomb's law, we know, sorry, from Coulomb's law of attractions, we know that F equal F is proportional to that one is Q1, Q2 divided by R square. Right? Can you remember this thing? Now, so the uh, if we, this one is the force, and we know that the potential functions means uh, we need to divide that thing or we need to integrate that thing. So if we uh, try to find out the uh, potential functions, then we know that, uh, so this one is a very primary uh, physics, that one is V of R, V of R equals to minus E square, that means if these two charges, one is positive charge and another one is negative charge, then one will be electron minus C, and another one is also plus C, so multiply with these two things, that one will give us minus E square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught R. So this epsilon naught is a permittivity, you know, this sort of things. And the value of this epsilon naught in uh, free medium, that one is 8.854 into 10 to the minus 12, isn't it? Now, so we know that there are different types of coordinate systems. That one is, uh, uh, say for example, there are spherical coordinate system, cylindrical coordinate, coordinate system, linear coordinate, coordinate system, so on. So we know that this world is an spherical shape. So we will try to solve the Schrodinger's equation in terms of uh, spherical coordinate system, right? So in case of the spherical coordinate system, we have three parameters. That one is R, next one is theta, and the last one is phi, right? So you know this sort of thing from your uh, mathematical background. And also, you, I think all of you know about this thing from your uh, Fields and codes. Uh, now, so you know the differential operator is denoted by nabla. This one is nabla is uh, that is this one is the second order derivative phi of r theta phi. That means this one is a probability function of finding electron in terms of r theta phi. So same equations, but the representation is different. In this case, we are representing in terms of a spherical coordinate system. And previously, we just uh, considered that this one is a linear system. Now we are considering this one as a three dimensional system, right? Okay. So, in case of three dimensional systems, we, we know that there is a system known as x, y, z, and that one is x, this one is y coordinates, this one is z coordinates. We know a cylindrical coordinate system, that one from there we know that r, z, phi, and we know from a spherical coordinate system, that one is r, theta, and Phi, isn't it? So phi here phi is a function of r, theta, and phi, and the rest of the things are as same as Schrodinger's equation, right? So here they have mentioned that the nebula square is a Laplacian, or we know that uh, this one is uh, actually defined by the Schrodinger's equation. Now, if we uh, take the derivatives, then we know that whenever we consider the uh, nebula square, that means in nebula is an operator. And for each case, we will consider once R is a, a derivative, we, we have to uh, take the differentiation with respect to R. Next time we have to take the uh, differentiation with respect to theta. And the uh, last time we have to take the differentiation with respect to phi. And whenever we will consider the derivative with respect to R, then we have to consider the rest of the two things are constant. So in the past, if we convert the uh, Schrodinger's wave equations in terms of spherical coordinates, then we find that 1 by r, r square, first derivative of r, r square, delta, uh, that means derivative of phi, delta. So in this case, that one is the derivative is, with we are taking the derivative with respect to 
r now in the next case we are taking the derivative with respect to phi in the last case we are taking the derivative with respect to theta and we are uh, just uh, assuming that these portions is a, just we keep these things as same as before now if we want to solve these things so we can express that one is uh, the solution will be something uh, depends on r something depends on theta and something depends on phi so we can uh, use the uh, methods of uh, separation of uh, variables then r so we denote these things with capital r with small letter r we using the separation variable technique next capital theta small theta next capital phi small phi okay so when uh, r o this one is not o this one is theta actually capital theta and phi is the function of r theta and phi now if we put this value that is we are just putting the separation of that means in place of phi r uh, r theta phi we are putting this separation of uh, variable methods then we can write down that one is in place of a small r we will put capital r capital r in place of uh, a small theta or a small phi we are putting capital phi just representation is different that means the derivative is r capital r capital theta capital phi so if we put all these values then the equation should looks like this now if we note down that the second terms that means this term this term is a simple terms that means there is no other terms except phi right so we can write down the solution of this portion the solution of this portion should be equals to 1 by phi phi square delta square square constant that one equals to minus m square so why m is the separation of variable constant so using this formula the as because this one is a very simple thing so we can uh, find out the solution equal uh, phi equals to e to the power e to the power j m phi okay so m is just a uh, separation of variable constant that one is either zero plus minus one plus minus two and so on okay now this uh, 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 for the rest of the part if we try to solve then uh, we can uh, put the n values we will put uh, where this n is known as quantum number so you know this sort of things from your uh, high school chemistry right so i am not explaining this thing so you know the energy of an electron so you know this e of a equals to minus m not e to the power 4 divided by 4 pi epsilon not square 2 h bar square n so you know this things from your high school physics that one is the energy of an electron at nth shell right so this n is a quantum number so using this formula try to solve this problem now uh, the psi of x the psi of x that one is the probability functions probability of functions or uh, for finding an electron so the solution of the wave equations may be defined as the phi nm and this one will be one solutions and this is spherical so this solutions uh, uh, this one is the probability function and the uh, spherical symmetric functions a not so we know that this a not sometimes this one is the radius of that electrons or and you know about this formula from your also from your high school physics and for a not means if we put the value of n equals to 1 then that one equals to 0.5 to 9 angstrom which one is known as bohr's radius okay so if we put uh, like if we try to draw the graph then this probability function should looks like this i think this one is not so much important and uh, no uh, you can go through these things for your understanding but uh, there might be no question from this graph okay so in this way you will find uh, uh, just summarized part about the quantum number and uh, which one uh, is al which one is am uh, which one is n these sort of things i think you know these things from your chemistry now in article number 2.4.2 that one is periodic table there is a uh, small discussion about the periodic table you know the this arrangement of this electrons there is a uh, uh, that is positive spin 
electrons and another one is negative uh, spin electrons you know about the Pauli's distortion principle <coughs> and so on so these sort of things is discussed here i think these are the very fundamental things you know most of these things from your uh, high school chemistry and also from high school physics <coughs> sorry so this will be the end of our seventh lectures so uh, try to uh, solve the uh, practice problems and also the exercise problems and if you face any problems we can discuss these things in our problem solving class so this will be the end of our uh, chapter 2 and next i will upload one lecture video that one will uh, give you the suggestion about the assignments thing okay in the next lecture i will uh, upload a lecture video that one is uh, for the assignment for, uh, uh, for solving few numerical problems and after completing these two chapters that means chapter 2 from Kassel book and chapter 2 from uh, Neyman book you will have to sit for a class test okay so this will be the end of chapter 2 thank you